welcome to this installment of Watts Weekly. Uh, I'm Tom Babby. For those of you who aren't familiar with me, I'm an instructor at the Brick and Mortar School out in Encinitas, California. Uh, on this Watts Weekly video, I'm going to be doing uh, a little exploration utilizing the methods, uh, the quick sketch methods that Brian Knox talked about in the uh, last Watts Weekly video. So Brian Knox, an instructor at the school, he just had his first online course released uh, a couple weeks ago. Quick Sketch Fundamentals, and he covers a couple uh, basic concepts in Quick Sketch. Um, he he uh, talks about gesture, he talks about building construction on top of gesture, and then he talks about going into shadow mapping and uh, defining out the uh, the anatomical nuances of the form in Quick Sketch. And uh, and each of the those steps uh, hold uh, a different amount of importance to the drawing. Uh, I'm going to show you how to utilize those with the feline form. Uh, I'll be doing a quick sketch based off of a leopard here. So I'm just starting here. I have a quick little indication for its head. And I'm going to go ahead and get the overall gesture of this body working. Pulling nice, long, smooth marks to get it going. Working from my shoulder. not getting caught up in little anatomical nuances yet or even maybe not at all depending on this quick on how this quick sketch uh, unfolds sometimes I kind of like to leave those out and just work on a in a more constructive fashion we'll see how this one goes but as of right now I'm working loose I'm working gesturally just trying to keep a great flow to this drawing I don't want it to get too stiff too quick. Not even necessarily worried too much about proportions. A little bit I am. But in those initial marks, what I really want to get in there is that flow, that flow of the form. So when I pull that first mark for that, uh, for that backbone, going from the head all the way through to the tail, I'm not worrying too much about proportions as far as that goes. I'm worrying about just getting that overall flow. Now that I'm going in here and placing these limbs, now I'm starting to dial it in a little bit more. Now I'm going to work a little bit slower than I normally would on a quick sketch, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So as I come down here on this hind leg, there's a great S curve that happens on the front of these hind legs as they come down. Beautiful S curve, and there's a wonderful juxtaposition when we get to the back side of those. We have a wonderful C-curve that terminates to a straight, and it brings in a lot, of, uh, a lot of great structure into the drawing. It keeps us from getting too noodly, finding those straights, and finding those really nice angles in the right places here, like this ankle right back here, uh, adds a lot to a drawing. So as I mentioned, I kind of got that, uh, that gestural mark in there. And now that I have that in there, I am going to start injecting in a little bit of construction here. I'm tilting the hips back. Uh, you know, you get this kind of distinct backwards tilt to the hips and quadrupeds. And I want to make sure that that's in there. So I'm tilting the hips back a little bit more. I'm going to come in here. Let's get that far leg in there. That same beautiful S curve, It's just because just it's stretched out doesn't mean we don't have it there. That same abstraction can be used there, same abstraction for the backside, where you get a nice C curve terminating to a straight. S curve, C curve, straight. Do the same with the far forelimb. We have a really nice S curve here. As it comes down, drop off at the wrist. And then we get these just giant paws that big cats are known for. They're almost like, uh, like slippers or, or like those old croc shoes. But we're just going to go ahead and break that down to a simple shape. We'll break that down further as we go, but for now, that'll do. Keep
keeping it nice and clean. If we're getting a little sloppy anywhere, we can clean that up. And again, I'm slowing down a little more than I would on a normal quick sketch. But even normal quick sketch, I'm not, you know, it's, it's a misnomer to call it a quick sketch because you're not moving any faster. You're moving more economically. It's more of an economy of thought and an economy of line, economy of the energy that you're, uh, that you're expending in your drawing more than moving fast. You're not trying to get everything in there. You're just trying to get the right things in there. And the right thing here is to get this tail in here a little more. It's going a little off the camera there, but that's okay. It's still on the page. Come back up here to the head. I'm going to start uh, really embracing the construction of this drawing. I'm actually going to pull that a little bit lower than I had it initially. I've got the camera set up here in front of my face, so it's sometimes a little difficult to see where that initial placement is. The key is, you know, if something's a little off, in a drawing, change it. Don't leave it there. Anytime you have something a little off, like the angle of that head, I want it to be a little bit lower. Uh, when you notice those things, embrace that change and get to it right away. Otherwise, you're going to have a, a cascading effect, a, a kind of an avalanche effect of misplaced items, misplaced features, mis misplaced uh, uh, landmarks on your drawing. So I got the chin jutting out here. I have the bulge of that masseter muscle that's uh, really uh, pretty prominent in most big cats. Pulling right on through, making sure the belly links up to the neck. We don't have the kind of stepped wide chest that you get on canines on cats. Cats have this, this beautiful rhythmic flow that comes in right through here from the neck right on into the belly there. You know, I always say that, you know, if you have um, a pet cat and a pet dog, you can see the difference between their, uh, between their anatomy quite readily just by petting them. Um, you know, if you think of a dog that has a big wide chest, you know, you can think about like just pounding on that chest as you, as you pet that dog or, or scratching the dog's chest. If you have a cat and you go to pick up the cat by putting your hand between their front legs, to lift them like that, you can feel that there's no, no wide area of that chest. There's no big plane that's there. It's more of a chasm. And that's why you want to pull that line right on through to the belly here from the neck. We're not coming down, branching out, then coming back in like we would on a canid. Just a quick little indication for an eye. Again, we're not getting too much into this, into any details even yet. I am starting to chisel out some features. You know, where we started really loose and gestural, now I'm coming in and I'm finding some structure to this. I'm pushing straights a little bit more. And even now I can actually start going ahead and incorporating that third aspect, those anatomical indications. A little bit of value applied there to get that masseter, I'm sorry, get the, uh, the zygomatic arch there indicated as it comes back and hooks up to the masseter. Zygomatic arch is that cheekbone, that masseter muscle is that large chewing muscle that they've got here on their cheek. Mouth comes down, folds back on itself, and goes back up. Soft tissue on a big cat is, on that mouth especially, is a whole nother video. It's a beast in and of, its, in and of itself. There's a lot of soft tissue on their faces. So again, I'm using a leopard as a basis here. They're kind of a nice generic big cat. Um, they're not 
too specialized in what they hunt, so they're not too specialized in their form. They have a pretty kind of middle of the road frame and form. Applying some value in here. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start building out some of these muscular indications. What's great about Brian's new course, uh, and you can find that in the uh, in the drawing program if you guys are looking for it, uh, Quick Sketch Fundamentals. What's great about Brian's new course is that he shows you all these different methods of quick sketch and he shows you how to link them up to each other. He shows you how they hook up together. And it's up to you as the artist to decide how much of each of those methods you want to incorporate into your drawings. Do you want to go strictly gestural with your quick sketches? Do you want to go more constructive based? Do you want to go more anatomical based? There's really no right and wrong way to do quick sketch. It's just there's so many options available to you and so many ways to approach it that, you know, you'll find your own blend of those three approaches and the way you hook up those uh, that blend, the way you incorporate gesture, structure, shadow mapping, anatomical indication, the way you apply those is what makes your quick sketch yours. It's what makes you the artist. And that's the beauty of that course that Brian's got. All right, now I'm going to start getting into some fun stuff here. Like I mentioned, I'm going to come in here and I'm actually going to, am going to start doing some anatomical indications here. Come down here with the triceps, the delts. I'll throw a hard edge up here on that delt. Maybe bring up the value just a little bit. The same thing down here with that tricep. I'm going to throw some value in there and throw a hard edge down there at the bottom of that tricep. Coming down here in the forelimb, the lower portion of that front limb. It's getting a little more particular with those contours. Get in here with some of the flexors and extenders. I'm not going to make, you know, a thesis out of trying to get each and every one of the flexors and extenders in there. Because again, that's not what Quick Sketch is about. It's not about moving fast and getting all the information in there. It's about being uh, decisive with what information you are putting in there. It's about putting in the right information that helps sell the pose, that helps sell the drawing. And these, just a couple indications for those flexors and extenders really gets the job done. I don't need to do much more than that. Kind of, kind of fun to break the, uh, the containment of that leg there with a little bit of value. Nothing wrong with that. All right, so as I come down here to this paw that I laid in, you know, kind of this cartoon style paw, what I'm gonna do 
is take that kind of slipper shape that we started with. I'm going to throw a dividing line down the middle of it. And then another line and another. And there we've got our digits. Just like that, we've got our big cat paw. This is one of those areas that you do need to fight to find a, a little bit of clarity maybe outside of what your reference shows. A lot of big cat reference that you're gonna find is going to have most of the uh, delineations of the paw, the individual digits, um, lost. That information is going to be lost. You usually have fur tufts or it'll be standing in, you know, uh, high grass or, or vegetation. And you're not going to see a lot there. So that's where it comes, uh, you know, a little bit of anatomical study comes into play. And then design understanding what's there, and then designing it out when it's your turn to draw it. We're going to come in here now with the belly. Nice wide belly there. And a lot of uh, photo reference of wild cats you'll see that kind of uh, like kind of paunch that they get right here of hanging loose skin. And uh, on domestic cats, that's, that's usually because uh, we like to feed our cats a lot. Uh, we as people like to feed our pets. Um, on wild cats, it's a different story entirely. On a wild animal, the reason you've got that little bit of a paunch there is that uh, that feast or famine kind of life that they have. You know, when you're a predator, you're either uh, gorging or you're fasting and waiting for the next catch so you can gorge. So you get a lot of that extra tissue that kind of hangs down because it's constantly expanding and shrinking, expanding and shrinking what's underneath there. A little bit of value in there for the middle for the midsection here. Getting that nice core shadow there on the belly to help sell that roll of that midsection. As we come up here, we can get a quick indication of the lats. I'll go ahead and throw a little hard edge there too. It's always fun to toss on. Coming up here on the shoulder blades, throwing a bit of a hard edge there. We'll throw a little bit of value on that fat pad around the mouth. So we come on back here to the hips. You get a little pocket that happens, a little indentation. So I'm going to get that indicated. Then as we come into the legs here, like I mentioned, we have that beautiful S curve, C curve, and a straight. As we come down here to add some more structure, I'm going to go ahead and drop a vertical on that patella right there. Again, taking that gesture and just modifying it, modifying it just enough to add a little more information, a little more structure. Coming in there, keeping most of that, uh, the gesture intact, but modifying the contour of the form. Getting more accurate with that contour. Again, dropping off another flat here at the, uh, at the ankle. Coming down, same deal with these paws. See just a sliver of that far toe. And then we'll toss the little claws on there. Little retractable claws. So we're not we don't have those claws out. They're retracted. They're pulled into the leg. 
Again, we're going to do a little bit of anatomical indication here. Muscles of the upper leg. So this is a little bit of a quick sketch demo, a little bit of a uh, wildlife anatomy demo, I suppose. What I'm showing you is that you can use those quick sketch rules in anything you're drawing. They apply to, to all, the, all different forms, all different kinds of creatures. Kind of like this little lost edge here in the midsection of the back. So I'm going to leave that there. It's kind of fun. Coming in with the toes again. Let me go ahead and get this far limb in there. A hard edge for that cast shadow as it falls onto that far limb. And I want to stress again, you know, I've said it a couple times. The the way Quick Sketch works, it's not about trying to get everything in. It's not about what you get in in the, amount, uh, in the allotted time. It's about what you choose to put in in that allotted time. It is much more about the editing process and the creative decisions that we make as artists than it is about anything else. Looking at the inside of this one, so we do get that little dew claw there. Come on down and again split those toes. We're not seeing the other two toes from this angle, but we are seeing that dew claw. Again, just pushing a little bit of a straight right here for the patella. So I've talked a lot and slowed down quite a bit, so this quick sketch has become a, a not-so-quick sketch, but we've kept the principles of quick sketch as we've gone through this drawing. Just going to come in here quick. And get this back leg taken care of, and then we'll call it a we'll call it a day on this guy. Hit that tail up really fast, but that'll be real quick. It's not going to take very very much to get that locked in. Again, you can see how little I'm putting in here. There's not really much going on here. Um, I'm not coming in, I'm not rendering everything up. I'm not even carrying the lines all the way through. I'm leaving them broken in certain areas. That's intentional. Uh, I enjoy that 
that kind of lost edge kind of feel. So I'm going to leave that in there. Quick Sketch is all about what you decide to put in. It's about slowing down, analyzing, thinking, and executing. Use the side of the pencil to get that wider mark, using the edge of the pencil to push that more firm edge on the bottom of the tail there. Then adding a little bit of value for the rest of the tail. We can go ahead and, and call that, call it a day on this guy. Uh, so here's our, our little uh, leopard quick sketch here. Left out the spots just to show you how the anatomy works, but you know, it's very easy to go in there and add those details later. Um, but yeah, so I, I just wanted to showcase with you guys how to use those lessons that, uh, that you can pick up in the new Quick Sketch Fundamentals class with Brian Knox uh, and show you how it's not just, uh, not just for, for figure drawing. You can utilize it for all kinds of drawing, whether you're doing wildlife, whether you're doing fantasy art. The principles all remain the same. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. This is uh, Tom Babby with Watts Weekly. Um, keep pushing play and, uh, and happy studies.